How many of you have noticed that every night that I have quoted a lot of Bible verses in my preaching? I believe that we need to get back to that. There's power in the word. I think sometimes preachers are so in love with their own voices and ideas that they forget that the power is in the word of God. I've heard too many speakers gargle with gunpowder and then shoot their mouths off. We don't need speculation, opinion, philosophy, or even tradition. We need the inspired Word of God. For those of you that are confused about my stance, I believe the Bible to be the inerrant, God-breathed Word that God has faithfully protected through the ages. I want to read from that, but first a backstory about the verses I'm going to read. The letter you're about to read is one of the most emotional, intimate, and intense letters in the Bible. It was written for a father to his son, believing that that communication would be the last one that he would ever have. We remember on 9-11 when those buildings crashed into not only two buildings but to the very soul of the United States. The terrorist, in an act that is almost torture, had reached a certain altitude where there was cell phone signal. And they said, call your loved ones and tell them goodbye because all of you are going to die. And I wondered in that moment because of uh, my love for my wife and my son, what I would have said if I'd have known these were my last words. And these, to Paul, were his mind, the last words that he gave to a young preacher, his spiritual son, Timothy. And he said, I, I need to solemnly warn you. I don't know the emotion behind the writing, but I can tell you from the narrative that you're about to hear how much Paul wanted his son to know the urgency of what he was saying. You've heard sermons. You've heard preachers. But never in my life have I ever felt that a message was life and death like this one. Don't you dare think that this is for someone else. There's a dire warning. There's a divine moment God in his mercy is pulling you out of the fire, pulling you out of disaster. And he's saying that a day would come. I know about Nostradamus. I know about his quatrains. But he missed it so often. And so many times people gave the thing a fracture trying to make it relevant. But the book of Timothy reads like the headlines of today. It's something on your phone. It's something undeniable. It's so real and so today. He said, know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Why did the man of God need to know this? For the same feeling that is all through this campground today, on this field. You have children. You have grandchildren. You don't like what they're being taught in school. You don't like that pornography and vileness is so readily present and that they've destroyed childhood. And I'm ashamed of Disney. I'm ashamed of Disneyland. I'm ashamed of Disney World. They have morally lost their way. It is not a place for children anymore. Somehow they believe that in this sense of what's good for society that you and I need to hear what they believe. But here's what the Word of God says. Know this, in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. The Bible didn't say the problem would be global warming. The Bible said the problem would be moral cooling. Men will love themselves, love money. They'll be arrogant, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents unthankful, unholy, disobedient to parents. We now are watching the educational system literally tell the child, you don't have to obey your parents. 
You don't have to tell them what gender you want to be. You don't have to tell them if you're pregnant or you might have an abortion. The very spirit that, the, that Paul the Apostle gave to Timothy is at work in our nation. It is adamant. It is real. It is going on everywhere. And it's time for us to take our children back from a demonic educational system. Men will love themselves, love money, be proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Then there are four of the most chilling and dark words that you will ever read in the Word of God. They all begin with the prefix UN. And it says it means that whatever comes after this prefix, it doesn't have it. It's devoid of it. And in this original language, it actually means you're incapable of it. It says they'll be unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control. We've reached the point where I believe that the pandemic of America is not the Chinese flu, but it is suicide. In Bakersfield, when the schools were closed, the rate of suicide among youth tripled. Nobody talked about what the lockdown did to kill people. We will know for years that there was this insane lack of foresight, closing the doors of the church when people need it. People need an open door in their church. People, look at me. If they could go and sit in Walmart, why couldn't they go and sit in a church? If they could sit in Costco, why couldn't they sit in a church? Because the word of God said they'd be unthankful, ungrateful. We're tearing down the statue of Abraham Lincoln. What universe of thought justifies that in the mind of any young person? Some bully professor who I would love to meet and tell him, why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Why don't you pick on somebody that doesn't need the grade, that doesn't need your approval, and needs to listen to your insanity that somehow Abraham Lincoln was a racist? The Bible talks about unthankful. We don't care about our history. We don't want to see the good that America did. We don't want to remember the World War II greatest generation that ever lived. We don't want to admit that Christianity in America built more hospitals, more schools, fed more poor and liberated more people than any movement in the history of the world. For you to turn that into a corrupt state, for you to make it, as the person said that didn't want Oral Roberts University to play in the final four, that it's archaic, that it's homophobic, that it's hateful, the Bible says they'd be unthankful. The Bible says they'd be unholy. My wife is a woman of God. She was in a store when a woman, in order to try on a blouse in front of all these children, just took off her top. Here in Rockland, society has lost its mind. You know and I know and you see it all the time. A level of rudeness, a level of darkness, a level of perversion. In the book, War and Peace, Leon Tolstoy said this about Napoleon. He had lost the power to think a decent thought. He couldn't even make up one if he wanted it. The Bible says in the last days that'll happen. And I asked God, how is that possible? And finally, it said having a form of godliness, but denying the power of it. The answer to the question is found in the eighth chapter of Matthew. Something that you need to understand words in the Bible. It says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, when he arrived to the other side of the country, the Gadarenes, two men under the control of demons met him. Coming out of the tomb, so fierce and savage, 
that no one was able to pass that way. When I looked at that, there was one word that said fierce. That word in the original language is very rare in the New Testament. I believe it only appears twice. Describing a, a being under the domination of a demonic spirit. The mind, the body, the will. Completely controlled by devils. And then the Bible says in the last days... Fierce and savage times will come. Do you think the grisly crimes that you read about, the violence, the hatred, the discarding of fetuses in dumpsters in a society that we're living in right now is merely the cause of immorality? There's something demonic going on in America. And what's going on in America is based on the devil's desire to get you to commit progressive suicide. You see, what the Bible describes, and these men in the gatherings, it said they, they couldn't be bound. They couldn't be stopped. They were savages. They cut themselves, and the people were terrified of them. You and I are watching every day a growing number of Americans that love evil, that love perversion. We have pedophilia going off the chart. We have human slavery going off the chart. We have people killing themselves. Some of them are not even watching. They had to develop an entire division of the Los Angeles Police Department to handle fathers who would go and kill their wife and all their children and then themselves. It was such a pandemic. And even though it is beautiful here, and there are country clubs, and there's money, and there's wealth, and there's position and education, the same demonic power that works on the back streets of Oakland, California, is in Roseville, California. It may look different. It may feel different, but it is there. And I'm here to tell you that the gospel of Christ has the power to defeat the devil.